So you're on the edge here with Team Bad Company. This is the second trip to Brazil. Man, that thing's chewed up. Look at this thing. Look at those We were fighting this 400 pounder. This lure slid up to the swivel. And the water we hit it, spent enough time out here, anything's possible. Out here in the wilds of Brazil. This is our secret weapon. Right here. My name is James Roberts. I grew up in Corpus Christi, Texas, um, on the coast. I was always working on little charter boats and stuff in the summer times. And um, I decided what I really wanted to do is be on those big white boats with those gold reels. And uh, an opportunity came for a boat that was passing through Texas. And uh, I got a job on it and I left and never went back. Uh, my name is Vitor Moura. I grew up over here in Ilhéus, Brazil. I was uh, started fishing with James and the French look when they come and uh, for the first time here in Ilhéus. It was a good opportunity for me. And it was a great honor to be sitting right here right now with this great captain, great person. I started in 98 when I met him. And uh, so far, it was uh, very good for me, for my life. And I've been traveling around the world, met great people, fishing, learned a lot. And that's, uh, I'm here right now in this Great boat. What's kind of ironic is I spent my 40th birthday right here, very close to where we're anchored up right now. And uh, I had no idea that I'd be back here for my 65th. Out on the bank again, pre-fishing. Anthony gets in here tomorrow. So yeah, man, super stoked. Kevin's killing it, first time driving on the world tour, finding the fish and, and driving like a madman on him. So, everyone's doing great. We got uh, James Roberts here backing up OB. Tomorrow Anthony shows up and we're right back at it. So I sent a message to Vito with the contact information for Captain Dan. And I started work on it, and I met him in Salvador. When the boat, so as soon as the boat docked the boat, docked down on the port, I was there. And then we started, and uh, it was another great opportunity for me, again, by James. And uh, it's awesome, you know, when you have uh, doors open for you like that. I had no idea that I'd be back here for my 65th or sitting next to Vito on another mothership program. Yeah. Go away. This 
This is day one for me. Trip to uh, Lake Four in Brazil. We're a little further out than we usually fish. Uh, starting out this morning, water's heating up a little more than what we like, so we're running to the edge of uh, trying to find some cooler water for the larger females that we're, uh, we're targeting. Captain uh, Kevin Bohannon's at the wheel. Another thing we're doing for this trip, we're pretty excited about, is uh, we're partnering out with IGFA. And uh, this came out of Stanford University and Barbara Block's laboratory. This is the satellite tag here, everybody. So, this is the stick, tag stick right here. We're getting ready for it. And she's gonna be swimming around with this thing and it's designed so that it pops up. It actually comes out of the fish after 200 plus days. And then once this thing pops up to the surface, then it will send all the data so that we can learn about her behavior for the last 200, 250 days. It'll track where she goes, how deep she goes, how far she goes, how fast she goes. But I think it's really important how far these females really go. And by the way, these things are almost five grand a piece. So all in the sake of uh, uh, science and for us to continue to do our uh, small part on trying to shape some of the fisheries. The 800 is significant because we put a satellite tag in her and confirmed it with IGFA. It is the first satellite tag that has gone into a large female in the South Atlantic ever in history. And we're just excited because we're going to hopefully deploy and financially sponsor uh, probably 20 or so tags throughout the world tour for the next two and a half years. And we're going to put them in large females because we, we believe that the, the females behave differently in the ocean. They travel different migratory patterns, uh, different obviously mating habits than, than the males. And uh, we're just really excited to uh, share the data and, and partner with IGFA and, and other scientific uh, bodies to, to try to study the behavior of these fish so that we can continue to promote our sport and for everyone to enjoy fishing for years to come. It's like a NASCAR team, man. We pull in, these guys jump on, they, uh, they wash the boat, they provision for us in the morning, they fuel. It's a uh, really dream come true. This is, we were just talking on the way back. This is, uh, I worked all my life for this, to be here. Leveraging relationships that I made through 40 years of fishing and, uh, and just, just the love of the game. Uh, for us to put in all this time for the love of fishing. We kind of kept those those numbers up. We had two shots today. We capitalized on them both. Um, it happened a little later on the day. We caught one that we called five and a half. And then we were about ready to come home. And then another one bit. And she was about 200. 
acted really strange. It never jumped until we got the leader and then it scooted away and got, gave us a little show. fishing boats out here. As a matter of fact, if you guys have a chance to come down here, look up uh, Charlotte Fishing and Majestic, which is uh, Sean Wallace and also uh, AC. They run great programs here, but uh, not a lot of traffic. We've seen one one little boat out here this, this entire week, but there's a lot of longliners and uh, they're not marked very well and we've been really fortunate uh, the last trip in this trip to be able to spot them, but today we actually hit one. So yesterday we went out, uh, got a little blown out. Not little blown out, we got blown out. Uh, blown like 25 knots, probably eight to 10 foot seas at six, seven seconds. Lightning everywhere, decided to turn around, cut our losses for the day. It's about a 37 mile run there, 37 mile run back. And today we are going fishing. What do, you, what do you mean? Wish us luck today. Oh. And wish us luck today. Because we got blue skies and we're going to find them. This is a uh, Royal Charlotte Yellowfin Tuna. The 150's been asking for a uh, fresh lot ahi, so here it is.
Brotherhood, when you spend that much time on a 33 foot boat, we've been having some fun. That's we've been having sure. some fun today. Uh, we fished hard, and uh, Kevin was really focused and got us two bites one early in the morning. A little guy that kept the streak alive, so nine days straight with Blue Marlin. We made a couple of adjustments toward the end of last trip that we continued on this trip, and our uh, hookup ratio has been pretty amazing i'm sure at some point we'll pay it all back but um and sorry some some things we're going to keep to the team we're not going to discuss the, a couple of adjustments this afternoon we had a bite of uh, another fully grown one and they were calling it magic one of number. those yeah magic the number. magic number so that makes two donkeys in the last three days so pretty pretty amazing fishery here it really is As we were fighting this 400 pounder, this lure slid up to the swivel and the Wahoo hit it. So when you're in a target rich environment out here at Royal Charlotte Bank, anything's possible and you spend enough time out here, lightning does almost strike twice. Wahoo ate it when it slid up the line. You get a good look at it? That's a big one. I know water. For sure water. And uh, there's confirmation right there. As soon as we put the tar lures in the water, boom, right away we've got it. Well, today the weather called for no swells and minimal winds. We get out here and it's blowing probably 18 and uh, we're going to throw it around pretty good out here. You know, this is a fantastic place. We will definitely be back. Uh, no doubt there's going to be a little piece of our heart left here. Very, very unique place. Hasn't changed. The legendary James Roberts is right behind me right now. He fished here extensively 25 years ago. And he said it just has not changed. It really hasn't. There's no marinas here. There's no fuel facility. Uh, just very hard place to get to. And the Royal Charlotte Bank is uh, spectacular. It's a huge bank massive walls and drop-offs. We had nine consecutive days of, of uh, blue marlin, eight consecutive days of marlin over 500 pounds. This is the second one that we satellite tag, and uh, yours truly named it. After the Royal Charlotte Bank, we call it Charlotte. That girl was scarred up, scratched up. Her peck fins were white. One of them was white. She had a, a hurt jawbone, lower jawbone. Her bill was messed up. Apparently she had been in something before we got to her. The first one is after Captain Kevin Bohannon's daughter, Lila. Lila. So Lila was the first one. Charlotte is the, the second one. This is our secret weapon right here. You might want to think about catching some big fish and come here. We got 20 fit captures in 10 days and six have escaped our grasp. Only the big ones get away. And it seemed like everything that got away from us was something we dearly wanted. I mean, the fishing is just been all big fish and we only had one day where we had a goose egg but we did get a bite it's just been been like a dream i've never seen yachts before in my life and, and all of a sudden I've, my life changed and that, that's who we are and that was awesome thanks james yeah you're welcome Peter. <laughs>
So you're on the edge here with Team Bad Company. This is the second trip to Brazil. The Wahoos seem to be thick. Caught quite a few Wahoos. This lure here shows some of the damage that's been happening with the Wahoo bites. So to try to mitigate that problem, Obi has taken some wax string and has made a little floss mark on here so that when the fish takes off, this lure used to always come all the way to the swivel to be past the fish's tail. Now it's stopping and it's beside his body. You know, we always say sometimes it's best if we stay close to our enemies. And it was all due to the Wahoos.